She left us to confer in private. It disgusts me to think that that ghoul is going to see me buck naked. How disgusting! <laughs> we won't allow it. We won't even let him peek. He has to get you naked so he can drain all the blood from your veins. I guess it won't make a difference to me then. I just wish there could be someone besides Odal Tree. You add a little vinegar to his voice, you could serve it on a Caesar salad. <laughs> and if you draw in a narrow breath, it depresses him for days. Here, somebody hold this. What's this for, Kalita? I don't like the way these butt springs feel. <laughs> it's not a mattress, Talitha. It's not supposed to feel like a hotel bed. <laughs> and how in the heck would you know? I'm paying quite a bit of money for this thing. The least they could do is make it comfortable. And besides, I'll be in here for quite the spell. <laughs> Look. Take a few snapshots of me here. <laughs> oh, I can't do that. It's not right. I'm not going to buy this contraption without knowing how I look at it first. <laughs> Would you expect me to buy a dress without trying it on first? <laughs> um, well, okay. Someone's coming. Ruby blanket ship, get out of there! Ah, who cares what she thinks? She and I went to high school together. She wasn't worth a darn then, she isn't worth a darn now. <laughs> now listen, when I die, I want Nellie Ray Baskins to do my hair. And not, I repeat, not, Wilma Hotchkish, who should only be allowed to sweep hair and not to touch it. Tell Nellie Ray I want my hair done up in one of those high platoon French styles I've been reading so much about. Something kind of flashy. I want to give those gossips something to wag their tongues about even after I'm gone. <laughs> and also, is anyone taking notes? Someone should be writing this down. There is no way you children will remember all this. Um, okay, but get out of there before Ogletree comes back. How is my mouth? I want it just like this. <laughs> Don't let Ogletree put some grin on my face. He's famous for that, you know. Happy to be up here with Jesus and all that. Well, I want to look serious and dignified. Savannah, honey, could you go on my purse and get my compact and lipstick? Oh, thank you, dear. Perfect. My makeup is perfect. This is the exact shade of lipstick I want. Ogletree uses the stuff they paint fire engines with. <laughs> okay, someone's really coming. Get out of there! <laughs> perfect. A trial run. <laughs> Ruby Blankenship swept into the room. What are you window children doing here? Nothing has happened to your family for years. Before we could say anything, she spotted Ruby, lying in the coffin. <gasps> oh, it must have been sudden. I hadn't heard a word. Look at that stupid grin Old Tree put on her. This whole town goes down grinning. Other than that, he did a nice job. She looked so natural. She almost looks alive. <laughs> yes, ma'am! <laughs> How did she die? I, I don't know for sure, miss. What do you mean you don't know? Was it her heart? Or some cancer she picked up in Africa? For her liver? Yes, I bet it was her liver. Your grandmother was a heavy drinker. I bet neither of you knew that. She left your grandfather during the Great Depression. I remember that very day. I brought a casserole over to your granddaddy's. I reckon she'll have quite the explaining to do to God Almighty. When's the funeral? I don't know for sure, miss. When did 
she died. Please, miss, it upsets me too much to talk about it. <laughs> oh, there, there, young man. Now I know you must be upset because you think your grandmother is smoking in hell this very second. <laughs> that was her choice. She chose to live a life of sin. And let that be a lesson to us all to live better lives here on earth. Oh, here's a piece of juicy fruit for you. It helps you to not cry, and it makes your breath great. Before Luke could take the piece of gum, Talitha reached out and grabbed Ruby's wrist. She took the gum, unwrapped it, put it in her mouth, and lay back down, slowly chewing her gum. There was a moment of silence before Ruby screamed and bolted out of the room. We could hear her taking the steps three at a time. Come on, I know the back way out. <laughs> More than ever, I believed in God. 
He was there in that car. He caused it. He saw it. And when it was over, he'd gotten what he wanted. One more fearful citizen bowed down and kissed his feet. And then, goddammit, I led my babies right up. I placed their hands in his, in his and led them over to him for eternity. I never went to college, but I know now there's something more than this world we see. Trapped there in that car, I felt it when Timmy Rose and Justin expired. They just left. And for a while, I went with them. We eased right out of that wreck and floated in a void, a marvelous dimension, like big flecks of ash free from a fire. That's why it didn't matter when they took their bodies. They were already gone and were part of me again, as they were to begin with, making me bigger. Their father came over from the city for the funeral. He was drunk and terrified to look at me. I wasn't scared. People looked at me like I was a monster, dry-eyed and calm. But if they touched me, they would have known. Hard as metal on the outside, empty as a suit of armor within. I live somewhere else now, with them. It's not in space or in time. It's a pure feeling, spread out like jelly on a warm piece of bread. Sinking down out of sight, the sweet is still there, sodden and hidden. A preacher came to see me afterwards. He asked me not to be angry, to forgive God, to try to see it as part of a plan I could not understand. I just looked at him, and he saw something in my eyes that scared him. Those three little babies, frightened as bunnies. I can't imagine your pain. I wouldn't try to. But do you think your affliction can bring you closer to Christ? Can you be with him in your suffering? And then I did something I'll never regret. I laughed in his face. I brayed like a donkey. When the priest wake raises the pale white host, something really does happen if you want to believe. If you don't, it might still happen anyway, right? Your past, wiped out by the force of the mystery, the future, emerging from one huge moment. Once at a student play in seventh grade, the whole backdrop collapsed. When the scene settled, reality was where it had always been. Right there, lurking behind the drapes, was a cinder block wall painted pale green, and a red door marked emergency exit, chained shut. For once, nothing but an nothing but an empty stage separated me from it. I was it, and it was this. Several million tons of concrete roadway and steel beams smashed down on top of approximately 274 live human beings when the San Andreas Fault flexed a tiny muscle. 39 died, including my children. I survived. Hundreds took part in the rescue effort. The rest of you, Christ have mercy. Watch on TV. The red door was changed shut. We went through it anyway. any more difficult to understand? Today I present a more enlightened version of the tragedy we all know, O oh, Romeo, O oh, Like Wow by Mike Harden. This is like this real super sad story about this dude Romeo and the student Juliet. They had names like that because it was like the real old days before MTV. So no one really had cool names like Heather or Brandon or Shauna. Everyone had really geeky names like Benvolio, and Tibble, and Mercutio. Anyway, there's these two old families, the, the Montagues and the Capulets. They really hate each other. I mean, they can't even walk down the street without thrashing on each other, because, like, that's what happens right at the beginning. This dude, Samson, who works for Old Man Capulet, he sees this other dude, Abraham, who hangs with Montague. 